I need to be challenged. I need to wake up each day and break a barrier where people tell me I can't do it. Call me a freak all you want. Because of my diverse skill set, yeah, I'm a double freak, <laughs> but I enjoy it. Hi, I'm Dan Spitz. I am a master watchmaker. I also co-founded the band Anthrax. Anthrax was one of the most successful heavy metal bands in the history of music. We changed the map so much that people had to come up with a term for it called thrash metal. But in 1995, I've kind of had enough of touring. I had children and a family, and I wanted nothing more to do but have silence in my life. As far as watchmaking goes, uh, I'm a third generation watchmaker. I started taking apart watches in my grandfather's uh, jewelry store when I was eight years old. After 95, I wanted to get my pedigree and be able to take apart what's considered complications or just crazy avant-garde watchmaking, which is the equivalent of thrash metal in watchmaking. The only way to do that is in Switzerland. I was lucky enough to gain access to a school where six people are chosen from around the world every three years. As far as the timepieces that I work on, uh, the watches usually start at 50,000 and go up to two or three million. It is not with a battery, not with a circuit board. You get into two, three, four thousand pieces inside a timepiece that all have to do certain things. So if there's a problem, you might have to rip apart the entire engine. We call it a movement. Figure out what the problem is, rebuild the watch. There's no roadmap to the pieces. When you're in that zone, in that watch, and trying to find that problem, when you finally execute whatever that is, uh, it, it's a feeling of euphoria. And it's just like when you're in the recording studio, and just like you when you're on stage, and we have zero room for error, and I take that into my watchmaking. Metal itu masih dianggap musik setan gitu, musik pemuja setan, musik hitam, dan dianggapnya ya e, kita tuh remaja apa yang nggak normal gitu, ya mungkin kayak gitu. Tengok. Garut in Western Java, Indonesia, is a quiet place. Well most of the time. Karena kebanyakan orang di sini hanya bekerja seperti bertani, beternak dan lain Semua orang tua kami kiranya hampir sama gitu bahwa musik itu enggak baik. Rebellion, teenagers, rules and tradition. It's an age-old rock and roll story, but this time with hijabs. Meet the VOB, Indonesia's metal hijabis. <laughs> There's Firda, the vocalist and guitarist who loves hip hop. Weedy, the drummer, a Red Hot Chili Peppers aficionada. Then you got CT on the bass, who likes her thrash metal bands like Lamb of God and System of a Down. Jadi uh, karena VOB ini terdiri dari orang-orang dengan berbeda jenis kesukaan musik, jendernya hip metal punky. Itu perpaduan antara hip hop, metal, dan punky. Aku kalau perform biasa pakai hijab warna hitam dan sekarang nih lagi di <laughs> lagi dipakai identik sama aliran musik aku metal trash metal. Ada beberapa media yang uh, melihat Tiobi sebagai sesuatu yang unik mungkin karena uh, musik keras. Uh, disandingkan dengan hijab untuk ukuran negara yang sangat religius. Since its start in 2014, the band has seen some success, but not without its critics. 
kita juga pernah mendapat beberapa kali teror dari orang sekitar. Kayak saya pernah dilempar batu sama orang dan kena kepala. Tapi kalau dari orang-orang sekitar kayak di desa itu lo mulai ada yang mendukung kita. Rencana buat kedepannya sih uh, pengen fokusin dulu di musik. Jadi musisi profesional yang dikenal secara internasional. Terus uh, band yang bisa dikenal apa konsisten dalam bermusik gitu terus yang paling penting bisa tetap jadi inspirasi. most powerful thing about being a metal singer. <laughs> is the complete release <laughs> of passion. <laughs> I teach people how to scream effectively without damage, but I'm also a singing teacher. My background is Shakespeare and opera. I got known for being a scream teacher because I figured this out. And I'm glad I did because everyone was trashing themselves. Instead of going re ah, I went re Most metal kids, before they get trained, they think that the only way that you can get that sound is to feel that way. And that's dangerous because if you feel that way when you make that sound, it hurts. No! Three, four, five, and release everything. I teach them the least amount of effort to do it, and then they don't trash their vocal cords. I want it seamless. Metal is like has a, a certain uh, behavior, and it's about loyalty. It's real. Whenever people Tell us mariachi music is sacred and you can't change it or touch it, you know. And believe me, there's a lot of people that are trying to convince us like what we're doing is like a musical sin. But in order to create something new and beautiful, you have to take risk. You have to do something new. How does something new come about if you don't change it? Metalachi is the first and only heavy metal mariachi band in the world. We know what we're doing when it comes to mariachi. Before Metalachi, everybody spent years doing mariachi. We're charros. We did mariachi for our life. That's how we made money. We use traditional mariachi instruments. It's the same thing that you would find in a, in a mariachi band. Doing what we do is not really that easy. To make a heavy metal song into a metalachi song, we have to invent rhythms. And we basically create patterns. And a lot of people don't see it. They don't really hear it, like, oh, wow, that's a new pattern. But the thing is, is that if we see people moving to it, then we know we did a good job. Welcome to the stage, Metal Hache! We cover a lot of different types of bands and everything. Like some you guys know, like Guns N' Roses. Welcome to the jungle. Ozzy Osbourne, hardcore stuff like Slayer, not so hardcore stuff like Journey. <laughs> She's just a small town girl. I mean, you name it, we do all of it. There's times where a song translates very well, and we can pick it up like in a couple hours. We can put something together, and it sounds really nice. We've even traveled to Mexico to go play over there and not really knowing how they would accept it because there's a lot of people that are very traditional. You know, they love it because mariachi music is about life. It's about beauty. 
So is heavy metal music, and they're actually singing about the same stuff. They just do it in their own different way. By integrating the two things, we're showing mariachi people, this music is also beautiful. But we're showing our heavy metal music is that your, your music could be interpreted a different way, you know? So I think, I, we like that message that's being sent out. The first time like, I laid down the guitar track and then played the fiddle on top of this, it made me have goosebumps on my arm. It's like, this is something shamanic. My name is Nature Gangombegat. I am a musician. I'm originally from uh, China, but I have a Mongolian ancestry. So this is our uh, Mongolian fiddle, we call that Moninghor, or in the English we can say a uh, horse head fiddle. Throat singing is a very uh, ancient and traditional way of singing. You press your throat and you, you generate one uh, sound, but then you generate an overtune on the top of it within your mouth. It sounds like, it sounds like two sounds at the same time. If you read the Mongolian history, it's all about those brave warriors conquer all around the world and then they don't fear death or you know that kind of spirit. And metal people, heavy metal people is also like you know very manly. You don't give a shit, you just do whatever you want, you know, like this free free spirit and definitely free spirit in it. People will say, oh, why you are doing Mongolian music? They don't understand the whole ancestry thing. They don't understand your own cultural identity. But at the end of the day, I love the Mongolian culture. And that's all what it matters. Yeah.